Hello everybody and welcome back to another Doctor Who action figure review on the Huss Productions. In today's review I'm going to be taking a look at yet another Doctor Who B&M exclusive action figure collector set from the 2021 series. In today's review, the first Doctor and TARDIS from the 1963 story, An Unearthly Child. The taking a look at the packaging, for when I actually walked into B&M and seen this on the shelf, I was really taken by how excellent it looks. It's visually one of the better looking TARDISes which have been released as a part of the range and if you're somebody who likes to keep your action figures inside their boxes this will look excellent on display. This collector set features exactly the same style guide to usual. At the bottom we have the limited edition sticker as well stating that this is the first Doctor and TARDIS from the very first Doctor Who story, An Unearthly Child, 1963. Smart Doctor Who Gallifrey in text is littered around the entirety of the box and we have the white typeface logo. The preview window itself is absolutely massive, giving a good look at the figures on the inside of the box at many different angles, including at the top of the box as well. Flipping around to the back of the box once again, this is in fact really smart. We get a good look at the two figures on the so what's this story synopsis for An Unearthly Child, and even a little write-up about the actual TARDIS prop itself, outlining its design process, which is an excellent addition, especially for us collectors. In a rather special way, this collector set celebrates the origins of Doctor Who with the first TV serial, and the inner diorama from the packaging most certainly represents that, as we have the junkyard from Totters Lane as seen within An Unearthly Child. And although the TARDIS is very big, you can kind of get away with displaying the figures within it. So here we have the first Doctor and his TARDIS out of the box. Now in previous B&M exclusive TARDIS reviews, I think I've kind of made my point clear that I'm getting a little bit bored by classic series TARDISes. I've seen a lot of them, many different variants, some of them incredibly minor, and I kind of not wanted to see any more TARDISes because I think that we've seen enough. And then this one comes along, and you guessed it, it is an exception. It is brilliant. It is a really lovely variant, and a stark change to the original First Doctor TARDIS that we've seen, which was of course a Forbidden Planet exclusive, that I still love. It is still lovely in its own right. However, this one is of course much more TV accurate as we now have it extended much bigger roof. We also have retooled windows for the first time ever and of course a very stark change in colour palette to make it look more like the TARDIS from the TV serial and of course a First Doctor variant is thrown in there for good measure as well. Let's start off with the man who started it all. It is, of course, William Hartnell as the first Doctor. A rather interesting variant, as this is the first Doctor as seen within the pilot unaired variation of An Unearthly Child, the inclusion of the jacket being fastened up and the scarf, however, the absence of the cloak. Very much like the Fifth Doctor within the Earthshock Collector set, what I really like with this figure is that character options have actually opted to do something different, as opposed to a basic re-release of the initial version of the First Doctor from this story, which is great for the collectors who have stuck around since the Forbidden Planet exclusive series by providing something a little bit different for the shelf. As a younger fan, I always thought that this was an entirely different costume altogether compared to the other First Doctor figures, when in reality it is just the regular First Doctor jacket, however in the fastened position, with the waistcoat and everything underneath not exposed. So this has been sculpted in a lovely glossy black plastic. There are no additional paint applications on the jacket itself, although there are a few smaller details sculpted into it, including the suggestion of pockets at either side, as well as two sets of buttons running up the middle. Something of which that is different to the initial Forbidden Planet exclusive releases is that the cravat has now been painted a glossy black along the rest of the coat, as opposed to the darker blue. The side of this is also the lapels of the jacket, as well as the slight suggestion of the white shirt poking out from under. Underneath. Flipping around to the back, again we have a continuation of this same regular design, and we have the regular back to the first Doctor Court, including a number of stitching lines within the material of the jacket itself, as well as a suggestion of two buttons on the lower half of the back. The arms do of course continue the same detailing of the jacket, along with a series of creases and wrinkles, and of course on the cuffs we also have the additional line of buttons. One of the First Doctor's hands has been sculpted in an open palm position, however the other has been sculpted, much like the original release, to hold the First Doctor's walking stick accessory. Sadly, this hasn't been included within this collector set. Which is a little bit of a shame, I would have liked to see it included, however I don't know if that will be too costly. 
In order to have the scarf present on this figure in the absence of the cloak, a little bit of retooling has had to take place. The scarf and the cloak were originally one entire sculpt, so they're so slightly thicker compared to some of the other scarfs that we've seen released as a part of the classic series, the likes of Romana's and the Fourth Doctor's. So this does make it look like the First Doctor's head is ever so slightly longer than it probably should be, I think, in my own opinion. However, I don't mind too much. Really lovely, you certainly get that impression of the material being folded over itself to kind of create the hook over the First Doctor's neck. It sits very naturally. Of course, the overall colouring on this is also quite nice. We have a lighter grey with the black lines implemented over the top. A little bit of a wash is also applied on top of this to kind of make it look ever so slightly worn. And I think that this works considerably effectively, of course, giving the figure a little bit of a twist. It does overlap over itself and then does also drip onto the back of the figure's shoulder. Black lines do of course proceed down the entirety of the scarf and at the bottom we get the suggestion of some small subtle tassels. And as for the front this drips down ever so slightly longer. Moving further down the outfit to take a look at the First Doctor's trousers, this is a very similar design, if not exactly the same design to the First Doctor as seen within the Sense Rights Collector set, which was of course released in B&M in earlier 2021. Some people like this design, some people hate this design. From an accuracy perspective, I don't particularly know what is right or what is wrong. A brown colour palette where a light brown has been used and a darker checkered design has been applied on top. Flipping around to the back, it is actually considerable neat, I will give them that. It is a really nice design overall um, and is quite different from the initial release which was of course a lighter grey. First Doctor's shoes are once more a darker brown and we have the spats which have been painted a light brown. This is a very subtle paint application although again it's still nice that they've included it because it makes this figure feel again ever so slightly different to some of the previous First Doctor releases. Thinking back to when I was a younger collector I have a really fond memory of picking up the First Doctor and Saucer Amanda Dalek, which came out in 2008. I can recall really loving the likeness to the First Doctor on that figure. I thought the sculpt was absolutely incredible, but I also thought that it captured the First Doctor's personality really well. An elderly figure who's quite stern at times, but also quite quirky, because we have that smirk represented within the sculpt. And although this is the hatted variation of the First Doctor, as opposed to the non-hatted version which came on that initial 2008 release, I think that personality is certainly represented within this sculpt as well. Sculpting of the face structure in particular on this figure is excellent. I love the way that we have the cheeks which have been emphasised and equally that's drew attention to the mouth, side profile, that very pointy nose, and then those wrinkles surrounding the eyes are all brilliant. Compared to some of the other First Doctors, I do think that some of that detailing which we used to see on the face has been ever so slightly washed out with the paint application, but it still undeniably looks like the First Doctor. I love the way the eyes have been painted, of course a rather brown paint application has been used. As for the skin tone, I am a little bit unsure. Sadly I can't compare to my other First Doctors because I'm currently at Newcastle in University so I don't have my collection to hand, however I've seen comparison photos and um, it is very very pale, very unusually pale, so not particularly keen on that. I think that the previous First Doctors have done a much better job to make the skin tone look a lot more natural, as opposed to this rather haunted version of the First Doctor. On a more positive note, however, the hair is absolutely flawless. Very similar compliments to that of the First Doctor, which appeared within the Sense Rights Collector set. Even from the back, you can tell this is most certainly the First Doctor. We have so crisp and brilliant. We have that lighter grey which has been used, and then a white highlight on top, really drawing attention to those many different strands of hair within the wig. And of course, this is excellently emphasised as well around the ears. We have it folding around, looking very natural indeed. Completing the look for for the First Doctor, we have his woolen hat, and much like the initial release, I love the texturing which has been applied. It looks very woolen, very realistic. This is just a standard, regular black sculpt. It is ever so slightly raised above the head. You may be able to tell uh, between the forehead there is a bit of a gap, which is a little bit annoying, but again, I don't mind too much. So in summary, for the First Doctor action figure, I really like it. It is a little bit obscure, of course, from the unaired pilot. However, it makes for a good variant for the shelf, especially if you 
you already have those previous First Doctor releases. I think the outfit is lovely, it's great to be able to have a better look at the clothes jacket sculpt which is normally consumed a bit by that cloak and of course the scarf being draped over the First Doctor's shoulders is again unique because the vast majority of First Doctors don't have that scarf. One thing that I don't like about this figure overall is that skin tone which has been used on the face. I think it is way too pale, especially when set alongside the other First Doctors, but that doesn't take away from the fact that this is a great figure, and I think that the head sculpt again is absolutely flawless. It's just a shame that the paint on the face is as pale as it is. Materialising in from Totters Lane, are you ready for a load of compliments? It is of course the first Doctor's TARDIS, with quite a number of brand new additions, of course most notably the new windows, as well as the roof extension. Now the main base of this TARDIS is of course the same base that we've seen with all the classic series TARDISes released as a part of the B&M series, so we have the inclusion of the thinner base there at the very bottom, and the same usual TARDIS stuff that you come to expect on all of the releases, of course due to this being a B&M exclusive. We have the battery compartment and the speaker grill there at the very back. Although do note this is not an electronic TARDIS. It I'm really happy to see with this latest version of the TARDIS, as well as quite a number of the recent B&M TARDISes actually, is that the overall plastic which has been used doesn't look as plasticky as some of the earlier TARDISes relics of the Third Doctor variants. It had that unusual waxy appearance. This time around the paint application is really lovely. It is very different to that of the Forbidden Planet exclusive First Doctor TARDIS. A rather nice dark blue, almost murky grey, and I think that this is very effective. To this TARDIS using exactly the same sculpt to usual, we have that lovely wood grained effect across the entirety of the box, providing a lovely texture and really bringing the prop to life. A wash which has been applied over the top, which is kind of a grey, slightly murky green as well, once again really accentuating that wood grain detail and colour palette which has been used on this TARDIS and then complemented by that wash really brings this piece to life. It looks like a police box which has been bashed around a bit. It's visited quite a number of alien worlds, or in the case of reality, moved around many BBC studios over quite a long period of time. The combination of colour and weathering effects makes this toy look less like a toy and more like a representation of the prop from the TV show. It will look excellent alongside the other TARDIS boxes which have been released and really stand out on the shelf. Some think that the B&M exclusive series has really improved upon in recent years compared to the Forbidden Planet exclusive days is the police public call box signage. For this TARDIS we have a lovely white background which has been used complemented by an excellent bold black font. This is also complete with a border which has also been painted white, although a lovely weathered wash has been applied over the top to give the TARDIS some age and character. Despite what the sign says, and despite the fact this is a separate piece of plastic, this door does not pull to open. As with the vast majority of TARDIS boxes a part of this series, the lock and handle can be found in the centre. Both of these have been given a silver and gold highlight, although apparently aren't 100% TV accurate. A great touch is that the St. John's Ambulance sign has been clearly brushed over with paint during filming, so as a result we only get an ever so slight suggestion to its existence, again giving the TARDIS a lot of character. You guessed it, the TARDIS does of course have opening doors, as always, to reveal absolutely nothing on the inside of the box, which is of course accurate to the TV show. So this door is of course one that you need to open and close manually, it has a little switch there at the very top in order to hold it in place. However, the main door is of course closed via the usual button, and this works well. The base of the TARDIS features nothing special, just a little bit of company information and nothing more because it's not a flight control TARDIS or anything like that. Although something to note is that these TARDISes are always screwed into the diorama, so when you open this set do of course have a screwdriver to hand. Something of which that I didn't notice when this TARDIS was initially announced and was very shocked when I found out was that we actually have a brand new sculpt for the TARDIS windows. I'll be honest, I don't think that this new sculpt is particularly necessary, because overall the window does look very, very similar to what it normally does, but it's nice that they've done it anyway, for the sake of accuracy. The structure around the window remains the same, this has been given a lovely white highlight, although a dirtied wash has been applied over the top of the structure, as well as each individual window pane, giving the TARDIS some edge. The bottom panels have seen the most notable change as we have this pebbled design as opposed to the usual frosted design, which again, I quite like, although not 100% necessary. 
The other biggest change for the windows is that now each window has a little windowsill at the very bottom, which I must admit is a lot of effort for one singular TARDIS, so it makes me think that we may see a few more 60s TARDIS variants in the future. The main police public call box signage has also seen a little bit of an update in order to reflect the era that this TARDIS box has came from, so this time we have a black background with a bold white typeface and a dirtied wash has been applied over the top, which looks lovely and in keeps with the rest of the box. Moving up, we are greeted by what is probably the biggest change for this police box visually, as we have an extension of the roof to make it appear ever so slightly larger. I'm so happy that this roof extension has been sculpted because it's the thing that makes the first Doctor TARDIS so unique. It's essentially the thing that the original first Doctor TARDIS from the Forbidden Planet exclusive range was missing all them years ago. It is actually quite clever how they've managed to blend this new sculpt with the pre-existing TARDIS. As you can see on the corner pillars here, we have a continuation of the pillar up into the new roof to give the impression of this TARDIS being ever so slightly taller. You can kind of tell where the original TARDIS box ends and the new roof extension starts, but to be quite honest, I think that this is probably down to the fact that we've had this TARDIS sculpt now for so many years, know what to look for, and we can see exactly where the original sculpt once ended. I really feel like character options went all out with this box, because whilst we've got the new windows and the new roof, shall we throw in a new lamp as well? Why not? It looks excellent. We have that little thin base there at the very bottom, and then the rest of the light is really Really lovely, a great presentation. We have these little pillars going up all four sides which look great, as well as the lid on top complete with a small circular dome. In the very centre we have the lantern which is a lovely transparent plastic and again a great attention to detail on this. Lots of lovely small intricate details including this almost rounded section there in the very middle and multiple ridges throughout. I could almost imagine this glowing within black and white Doctor Who. So yes this is great, I'm so happy that Couch Options have included it. This collector set is without a doubt one of the best, if not the best, B&M exclusive Dr. TARDIS collector sets which has been released to date. I think a lot of care and precision has gone into making this collector set something special. Dr. Options are aware that we've seen this TARDIS so many times before, however so many modifications have taken place to make this TARDIS box look as close as to the 1963 box as possible, and as a collector I really appreciate that. And of course being from 60s Doctor Who, and just in case you were wondering, here is the TARDIS under a black and white filter looking absolutely superb. So in summary for the first Doctor and TARDIS from An Unearthly Child exclusive to B&M stores, I think you all know what I'm going to say about this product, it is absolutely excellent, a really worthy variant for the TARDIS with some brilliant changes, really making this one an essential for your TARDIS collection. And the first Doctor is also a really lovely variant, regardless of the fact of if you are a new Doctor Who action figure collector or somebody who has been collecting the line for quite a number of years. Again, a figure with a few modifications to make it stand out on the shelf. And aside from that unusual skin tone paint application, an incredibly nice variant at that. So thank you very much for watching this review. I really hope you have enjoyed it. Do of course stay tuned on the Horse Productions for brand new Doctor Who content on a fairly regular basis. And of course on that note, have a nice day and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.